What's up guys? It's that time of the year, deer season, right around the corner. And I'm gonna show you my 2023 bow setup. So I've been using these Matthews bows for, gosh, almost the last two decades. And obviously a lot has changed, um, but I can remember back 10 years ago shooting a Matthews thinking there's no way they can get any better. And then every year, you know, they continue to make these kind of micro, macro adjustments um, depending on the year and seem to be smoother, faster, a little more forgiving, and just all around more efficient. I have no idea how they do it. Shooting one 10 years ago to shooting one now is a huge difference and uh, keep getting better every year. So this particular model is the phase four, which I love. It's a little bit longer than some of the models I've had in the past, but I feel like for me, it just balances really well. And uh, honestly, the extra length, I don't mind at all. And I haven't noticed in ground blinds, tree stands, any situation I've been in where that's been a problem. One thing that Matthews has always done well is you've got a few different options of quivers. This year, I'm trying out this quiver in this kind of different configuration for the first time, but you know, pretty much any way you'd like to hold your arrows on a bow, Matthews has a, has a way for you to do that. Typical to Matthews form, they're thinking about the hunter to where it is quiet to slide this in and out. And if you're one that puts it in the blind, hangs it in the tree, puts it in your backpack, you can get th this thing on and off quickly and quietly. Lock it in position and that thing's rock solid. Another thing I'll mention is if you check out this rest, this ultra rest, Matthews has been putting on these bows for years and they've just got it dialed in. It just marries perfectly with the Matthews bow and again comes tied in and set. You make a few fine tuning adjustments for your um, for your specific arrow and shot and you're good to go. If you can see it is a drop away rest so it's going to start in this position and what I do when I put it in the tree is I'll take this and I'll pop it up and you're good to go. This is quiet. It can't escape because of this top bar and what's really cool if you haven't seen these is that when I release that arrow, this rest falls out of the way before the arrow clears it. So there's zero interference and you're getting the purest flight that you can get. So let's try it out. You could probably see the single pin sight. And I know there's a lot of debates on these, whether to use multiple pins or single pins. Honestly, these bows are so fast. And I shoot a 29 inch draw, uh, 70 pound bow. And they were getting so fast that when I had multiple pins, I was getting a halo around, you know, my 20, 30, 40, right in that range. And I moved to a single pin quite a few years ago. This is the HHA Tetra and again takes some practice um, because i have had situations where you know you range an elk at 50 yards and you spin that wheel right there 50 get dialed in he takes a few more steps so you really want to work on if you're going to hunt with a single pin you want to work on shooting at that distance but also another five ten yards and kind of get an idea of, of where your holds are these are actually pretty easy to set up. Initially, you wanna break your bow in a little bit, shoot quite a few arrows and stretch that string out. I'm gonna say 20, 30 arrows ought to do it. Mount the sight, and with these, what you'll do is you'll shoot at 20 yards, get your zero, shoot at 60 yards, get your zero, and then it tells you what tape to put on there. Put that on, never have to mess with it again. So, for years, I shot a regular finger release. And then I moved to these because I was getting a little punchy on the trigger and I had a 
good friend of mine tell me about these thumb releases and move to this and just absolutely love it. And the beauty of this one is I'll put it in the tree and I'll just leave it hanging just like that to where I can slide in and you're ready to go. But one of the things with these thumb releases is that it really allows you, it, it actually really uh, um, prevents you from getting trigger happy and jamming on that trigger. Where this is similar to like what you would see in a back tension release where I'm gonna anchor it and I'm gonna wrap my thumb around that. And when I get set, I'm just gonna start squeezing and pulling back at the same time. And the best shot is when it surprises you when it goes off. So if you've never done it, take a release, any release, could be a finger release, thumb release, Hook it up, draw back, and let somebody else squeeze the trigger. And it's a totally different feeling than, than when we shoot, but that'll show you kind of the difference in what it's supposed to feel like when it's a total surprise versus those of us like myself with the trigger that would get trigger happy and, and jam at that. So I'm gonna show you again. I'll take this Scott thumb release, put it on the loop, good to go. Another thing that Matthews does really well, again, is just making their stuff pretty adaptable to every shooter. And the stabilizer is a great example. If you can see here that we can now take a stabilizer, and if you're the fan of a short one and it balances out perfect for you, you can loosen a set screw, slide this in, and lock it into whatever position you want. So. I typically like a longer stabilizer, um, but again, this gives you the option to not have to buy multiple stabilizers to find out what you like, but throw that one in and put it at whatever length you want. To the arrows and this thing, this Easton Full Metal Jacket, and this is a 340 grain, I have been using for literally a, a decade and have not had any issues. So it's one of those where if it's not broke, you know, don't change it. And this thing has worked for me over the years. Uh, I like a little bit heavier arrow. Uh, I'm a big fan of guys that want to put some weight forward. Uh, and then also use a heavier broadhead. So this would be the equivalent of a 125 grain broadhead. So I've got a 125 field tip. Uh, and I just think, again, these bows are so fast now that if you can throw a little heavier, a little extra weight down range, you're just gonna have more kinetic, kinetic energy. And you're not necessarily gonna lose a lot of distance, especially with a single pin sight. Because when I tape that, it is set for this weight and you're good up to you know whatever you're comfortable shooting at uh, but again you're just throwing a little more weight down range to get some more energy and uh, really be able to do more damage on whatever game you're hunting one of the things that makes this phase four so smooth and quiet is what looks like to be four limbs you got two on the top two on the bottom is actually eight and these are individual limbs split by a dampener, which no clue how they thought of that or why, but in shooting it, you can tell the difference on just how quiet and smooth and how little vibration comes through this bow. This bow 
has a special place in my heart. As last year, I was able to kill one of the biggest deer I've ever killed. And it's gonna be hard for me to put this one down. Well guys, this is my setup. Thanks for checking it out with me. Again, this comes over quite a few years of shooting and just working through different configurations and different pieces of equipment. I just encourage you to get out there, try out some kind of different configurations, see what works for you. And uh, I hope this was helpful. And please leave some comments, let us know what you shoot or uh, what I might be able to try differently. I'm always up for some new suggestions.